Trial chambers and trial spawners have been added into Minecraft, and of course, we're gonna make some farms all about them. Once you defeat the waves of mobs that come out of trial spawners, they will drop loot out of the top. This loot can range from potions to golden carrots to even trial keys. And while the trial keys don't quite have a use yet, they probably will in the future. So this current farm is pretty awesome. It's completely afk a bowl. You don't need to uh, activate anything. All of the drops get stored in a chest at the top, so nothing will despawn. And this is by far the simplest build. It doesn't even require redstone to pull it off. You just have to break some blocks and place some blocks. So let's take a look at how this farm works. All you have to do is be near it. I have a little uh, area here where you can stand and then be in creative mode, and uh, go, or not in creative mode, basically. Be in survival mode, that is how you actually are gonna be playing the game. And then all of the trial spawners will detect you and start to generate mobs, and they're a little bit loud. You can actually hear the trial spawners going off and summoning in these wave of monsters that you're actually supposed to be defeating, but the farm will just get rid of the monsters and once all of the waves are complete, the items will pop out of the top of the trial chambers. As you can see here, uh, this happens to be spawning only strays, but we're getting strays in here, they're dying. This will work with uh, really any of the mobs that can spawn from a trial chamber. And once all these waves have gone through, you'll notice that the spawner will open up and drop an item. Looks like we're getting some now. Uh, I can hear them going off, at least. There, oh, there we go. I see, uh, <laughs> there goes an emerald. Uh, do I see anything else uh, in here? Uh, it looks like something went up there already. Uh, there goes our emerald into the hopper. Oh, I see some trial keys. They're flying around. Eventually, they made it into the hopper. There's one more trial key. Okay, looks like it worked. The biggest downside to this, oh, that's crazy. I got four trial keys. Uh, on this one. Uh, the biggest downside to this farm is that the time it takes to reset the trial spawners can't be changed and it does take a very long time to reset these spawners. That is 30 minutes of real in in world life, okay? That's, <laughs> you can't speed that up. When looking to design this, I looked around at lots of the different rooms that are inside of the trial chambers. And you'll notice that most of the rooms don't actually have that many spawners in them. Like this one right here, it only has two. This one happens to have three in it. Over here, down here, I think this one, that one only has two. Some of these hallways do have a lot, but man, there's a lot to deal with. So I found that the perfect room to build this type of farm in is this room right here. This is what it looks like before you do any of the building. And remember that your trial spawners may spawn in different mobs. These here happen to spawn in skeletons. You can tell from the bone blocks that are beneath the trial spawners. I found that basically in these rooms, uh, it'll be one type of mobs on every single floor. The great thing about these rooms as they spawn in is that they have five trial spawners inside of them. And in this uh, build, or this uh, this trial chamber specifically, uh, we got really lucky actually. There's two right next to each other. And once a trial chamber, a trial spawner has been activated, it kind of just plays out its timer and it spawns in the mobs. Uh, you don't have to be standing next to it. The mobs just have to die. It doesn't have to be the player that kills them. So if you come, come by here like in a minecart and activate them all and then move over to the other one uh, and activate those, then you'd be actually doubling up the amount of loot that you can get. So something like this is really cool, but it's just luck if you can find it. So let's explore how this actually works. And then I'm going to show you block by block how to build it. First off, uh, you have your trial uh, spawners and the behavior that they need in order to summon in a creature is what we really care about. And in order to bring in a mob, the trial spawner needs to have a block within four blocks in a sphere around this spawner. It also needs line of sight. So if you actually have a wall 
in between like a spawnable platform or let's say I had a block like right here a few blocks then it wouldn't be able to actually see any spawnable space at the moment that works very differently than other blocks like line of sight um, that's not typically an issue that you have to worry about with spawners, but with the trial spawner you do now The mob has a place to spawn, but we need to kill it kind of quickly and right now Fire is a useful tool to do that the trial spawner does not Worry that there's fire in the way when it spawns in a mob So that's good news for us. We are in a development build of the game So this may be updated in the future if this gets updated away We do have a few other options wither roses can be used although they are not as easy to obtain as just flint and steel. And if for some reason that gets patched away, you can always just move the mobs away from the trial spawner. If the mobs are away, like 45 blocks away from the spawner, uh, then they consider it dead. So you could set up a situation like if you had a, uh, a spawner that had zombies, you could set up maybe a turtle egg and then the zombies would be attracted to it and move away, maybe fall down a hole. You could set up a trapdoor trap. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways to uh, kill the mobs, uh, but you do need to make sure that the block that uh, the trial spawner is looking at it can see where this mob is going to spawn. And we're gonna cross our fingers that this fire trick doesn't get developed out of the game. We don't care about the mob's loot. We only care about the spawner's loot. So the mob will spawn in the fire, immediately die, and all of its drops are also going to die. And then eventually, after a few waves, all of the mobs are defeated, so the trial spawner will output its loot. And then that will go into this uh, water column. This isn't a bubble column or any type of fancy like way to get the item to move super duper fast. Just items will naturally float in Minecraft. So the items will float up to the top. Once they get up here, we have a few water currents which push them around to get to the item hopper, which puts the items into a chest. Uh, like I said, the biggest downside to this farm is that we have to wait 30 minutes for the trial spawners to reset, which means only five items or uh, five potential drops uh, every 30 minutes. So that means 10 potential drops every hour. Uh, but uh, who knows how valuable these trial keys are going to be. Maybe that will be worth it, or maybe you just have an awful lot of time on your hand and you really need some strength potions. Before we get into the step-by-step -step building guide, uh, just talking a little bit about the materials used. Uh, we have netherrack, very simple to obtain. I have uh, the glass here, but it does not need to be glass. This can actually be any type of block that you want. I just like to be able to see what's kind of happening and if we are running into any issues, but you could build with stone and it would be just fine. We are going to need some buckets of water, so make sure you have that available before you start your build. We're also going to be using a technique to get water sources in here that uses uh, kelp, so make sure you have a little bit of kelp and some bone meal to make Make it grow other than that we are going to need a pick to remove a whole bunch of blocks uh, some ladders and the hopper and the chest so here is a trial chamber without any of the build that uh, I've added this is how you would find it if you had come across one within a trial chamber system and you had found this room and you're like, oh my gosh, there's the room with the five spawners that I've been looking for, hooray! Your first step will be to come in here and actually defeat all of the trial spawners. Uh, these ones will be making skeletons uh, based off of the bone that is below the spawner, uh, but you might get zombies, you might get spiders, who knows what you're gonna get. Uh, so actually go in here and defeat and, and kill off all the waves of the different mobs. Uh, and that way, they uh, all the spawners will go dormant, and they will be dormant for 30 minutes, allowing you to build what we're about to build. I'm in creative mode, and uh, I want to test it uh, once we're finished, so I'm just going to stay in creative mode. Uh, that way, we can switch into survival and uh, go ahead and test it once we're finished. Uh, the next step uh, that I like to take is all of these copper bulbs around. Uh, some of them are oxidized uh, quite a lot, so I like to go in here and scrape off all the oxidation and add a layer of, uh, of wax if it doesn't already have it. Some of the completely unoxidized bulbs already have uh, the beeswax the, the, uh, on it. It already has the honeycomb on it, so uh, you don't actually have to honeycomb them. 
Uh, what I do is I go through and I get them all to no oxidation and then I go in one more time and use the honeycomb on it. And that way, if uh, there is one that already was honeycombed, I won't accidentally scrape it off and reuse it. Like see this one already had the wax on it, don't need to apply it. Now that we're done with that, I want to add a ladder so that I can quickly access the entire room here. And so uh, I like to think of it uh, at the top of the whole thing. We want the ladder to be in between the two trial spawners. So it's gonna go along that back wall there. You'll notice down here at the bottom of the build, all the way at the very bottom, see that's, it doesn't get any uh, deeper than that. Uh, there's also an entrance here. Now your room may be set up differently. I've noticed uh, two different entrances. There's one here and then there's also one uh, over here. This one happens to be a dead end. I've also seen that this was the only entrance into this room and that this one down here was a dead end. So uh, you never quite know what the room layout is gonna be. Uh, but right here on this copper bulb, all the way up along this wall over to this copper bulb, uh, that's where you're going to want to add your ladder. And so either you're at the top or the bottom, uh, but just punch through the floor there and start adding your ladder. And this is actually gonna go all the way into the ceiling you're eventually actually go ahead and do this now uh, break through oh my gosh I didn't realize there's a cave up here what this is gonna throw stuff off well uh, I think it'll be fine honestly if you have this uh, you may want to block this off <laughs> make it safe obviously but this will be just fine for our build. Now that the ladder is here, we can quickly go between the floors, which makes building a lot easier. We're eventually going to remove almost all of these blocks. Uh, I think there's only like a, one or two that uh, we're gonna wanna keep around. So you can start removing blocks if you would like. Uh, I definitely remove all of the chests. We don't need that. There's also two more on the very bottom floor that we are not gonna need. So we can get rid of those. That one had diamonds in it. Oh my gosh, the loot is real. The next step is going to be to come up to uh, this uh, top uh, area. I'm gonna destroy some of these blocks and we're gonna add in the glass uh, chutes, the glass tubes, and we're also gonna add the, uh, the where the mobs die, the death floor, if you will. Um, you'll notice that uh, you have your spawner and then uh, all these copper. Uh, we're gonna break out six of the copper here and that just will leave a one block space and then that empty space that we just broke out. Inside of that, we are going to add another rack and another rack, whenever it is lit on fire, it'll stay on fire indefinitely forever. So this is what we're going to use to keep the fire going. Go ahead and grab glass. Mentioned this earlier, it doesn't need to be glass. Uh, you can use stone at, at this step, but we need some type of tube to go from uh, the ceiling all the way to the top of your spawner. And I like to use glass just because I can see into it. Before we uh, step out of here and make this tube all the way down, I do want to break into the ceiling here. So we're gonna break one block uh, and then another, and you would probably have more than just that because we have a big open space, uh, but I like to break this block as well, which you can reach from the floor here, and that'll just help you point in the right direction. We're gonna do that on top of the other spawner as well, break the block directly above it, break the one above that, and then the one kind of in front of that if you're facing towards the ladder. Now let's finish our glass tubes here. We want this block right here to be open, okay? This needs to be air, all three of these, in fact, because the spawner needs to see the spawning platform. So uh, don't put any blocks in front of your spawner. Let's add the same thing to the other side. Now, we are in a unique situation because we have this crazy cave thing above our build. Uh, typically, you are going to have Solid rock, uh, that's what I've had every other time I've built this so far. Uh, but if you are like me, woo, you're lucky. But if you're not like me, you're gonna be coming up into a big area that is just like rock here. In fact, let me do that, okay. We're just gonna fill that in with stone, so you'll just get the authentic experience uh, that you, you should be getting. Okay, so we are gonna come to the top of our ladder, break out one extra block. So you'll notice that you have the, uh, the, the polished tough, and then you have tough bricks, and then you'll have whatever the heck is uh, the ceiling. And you're gonna wanna break the bricks and the, the other block there. You're just gonna come two blocks away from your ladder, and then start digging left and right and eventually you'll come into 
contact with the build you made before with the glass tube. We're gonna do that on both sides so that we will be able to access both of the spawners. Now go ahead and get a water bucket. You're also going to get your kelp ready and also your bone meal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a water source to the top of each of these. That will create flowing water all the way down to the spawner, but we don't want it to be flowing water, which is a different type of block. We want it to be a water source block and there's an easy technique to do that, which is to grow kelp in the block, okay? It works on both editions, not sure why this is the technique to do it, but it's the technique, okay? So now we have uh, blocks of water, and you can tell that because if we break out one of these glass, it'll like flow all over the place. And uh, we want that because we want items to easily flow to the top of it. One uh, final step for this level, we are going to add two walls of glasses just to keep you safe. If you want, you can even add like even more glass. You know, you could make this as safe as you want. Uh, make sure there's at least two spaces for your mobs to spawn in there. Uh, but this is gonna be added and this section right here, those two copper blocks, that's the perfect AFK spot for this farm. Next, we're gonna break all the blocks that are not the spawner or netherrack or glass, okay? Everything else can be destroyed. All this copper, you're gonna have so much copper, you don't know what to do with it, including all these blocks here. I like to keep those two copper blocks near the ladder. I just broke the nether rack. I said I wasn't gonna break the nether rack, and then I just broke the nether rack. Okay, put the nether rack back. There we go. That's one layer destroyed. Now we can destroy the next layer, and you're gonna have a big old drop below that polished top. Break all the blocks underneath the nether rack. Just break, break all the blocks that aren't nether rack glass or a spawner, like I said. And this level is looking super great. The very, 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 very last step is just to light this nether rack on fire. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. There we go, one's on fire, the other one is on fire. And this is really ready to go. Now let's just move on to the next few layers. And they're all gonna go pretty similar. We're gonna make sure that all of these blocks that potentially might be in the line of sight of the spawner is destroyed. We just don't need them anymore. We're gonna make a pad for the mobs to spawn on here. Uh, because we have two spawners here and I like to keep one block of space between the pad that they spawn on and the spawner itself for the tube of glass, uh, I like to make this one a little bit bigger. We could even <laughs> break into this weird pillar thing here, make it really large if we want. And then uh, we'd bring the tube down, which we'll do now. Now I happen to be in survival, but or sorry, I'm in creative, but in survival, I've uh, tried this out. It's really not that difficult. You may need a few temporary blocks to uh, to get and reach up to the top. But other than that, uh, this is really a super duper simple farm. By the way, this specifically, you can if you want. I know I'm destroying my, my stuff here. Uh, but I did, uh, when I did this earlier in survival, I was able to put down some like starter blocks here. Remember, don't put blocks in front of the, the spawner. That just will not work. And uh, from this block here on this spawner, you can actually reach over and put down all the blocks. So if you wanted to, I know that I already built this, but you can just like reach over and put down all the blocks, which is kind of nice. Also, that will mean that you'll be at the top of the ceiling when your build is completely finished. And you do want to punch through the ceiling uh, up into that space that we are at. Uh, once uh, you're finished uh, with the tubes and uh, putting down the nether rack, let's come up to this ceiling space. And you'll notice, uh, remember, I, I opened up a hole down to uh, the bottom of that spawner. Uh, but this spawner here on the right will actually be in line with the other spawner. So we can just kind of dig until we eventually get to it. If we look at that one, it's actually just off one block uh, from right here, but it's actually in the center of the room. So if we come back to our ladder here and build out and away, we'll eventually, uh, there we are, run into that spawner as well. You'll notice that we kind of have like spawner over here, spawner over here. Well, we can uh, uh, delete all of the blocks in between and make this a nice square room. And what we'll want to do is on this back wall, and I'm going to add a torch just above uh, that hole that goes down to... Uh, that trial spawner, uh, this will be your back wall. So you'll actually have the other spawner 
be off of the wall by just one block, and that is uh, that's perfect. So we'll put a torch above that. Just make sure this is all lit up, uh, nothing super fancy. Uh, and we only have one more spawner to hook up uh, to to this, and uh, and we're done. Uh, so as we're still up here though, we don't want to not forget to add our water. So we're going to add both of the water. We're going to head down there with our kelp and do our kelp technique to make sure all of this are, is water sources. Do it to the other side as well. There we go. All grown up. Oh my gosh, there's particles all up in my face. Break. Break. And we're good. Heading back down to this uh, floor that we are currently working on. All we have to do now is break all the blocks that aren't netherrack, spawners, or glass. Let's get to it. Now, these spawners can reach four blocks away. So if you're looking here, there's this uh, entrance here. One, two, three, four. Ooh, mighty close. Uh, I have found that if you just break out these first blocks here in uh, this pathway, and those are kind of the same across all of them, uh, it'll work out great. Also, you'll notice that there's an indent uh, below. So it also kind of all works out with the flow of the room. If you just break out those, uh, just that first line of blocks there. And light this on fire. And you're basically good with the second level. Now let's move on to the last level. And uh, this one has the most to kind of destroy in extra little blocks. Because not only does it have all that copper, but it has these trap doors. And also has these little pillar things. There's just a lot to break. We're going to be doing exactly what we did uh, before. I like to build this little like kill platform over here. Just to kind of keep it symmetrical. But you can really build it anywhere that you want. I go for a 3x3 three three, uh, just because it can reach out to four blocks away from the spawner. So uh, no need not to. And then we're just going to build this tube all the way up to the ceiling. And you'll notice that it'll be in line with the ladder, which is kind of nice. Also, as you're heading up, eventually the left and right sides of your tube are going to hit to uh, these glass walls right here. So you'll notice, boop that they match up there. And we'll just continue that all the way up to the ceiling, break that block out, and then place those there so it's all, there's no gaps. We don't want any mobs coming out of here. And now we have our final, the very last uh, area with the spawner. I'm just gonna break out some walls here just so I can have some space to kind of move around. We're gonna fill in the last of the water, so put in the bucket, drop all the way down there, put in the kelp, and you know the drill. Uh, the nice thing is that you can bone mill it just until it doesn't bone mill anymore. Uh, once you stop bone milling, can't grow anymore, you're good. Okay, let's go ahead and add our hopper. You're going to look at this block, uh, which is just the, the spawner that's one away from the wall. We're going to go one more and put down our hopper there. And then our chest is going to go here and here. We're going to go ahead and pop down the actual chest portion there. And then the hopper will point into that so that all the items will go into the chest. Now it's time to add our water, and this does need to be done in a certain order. Uh, just this one right here, this uh, corner, not the one that has the extra block, but the one that is just uh, a full water source. Add your water there, it's gonna flow kinda like that. Then one over here, and it'll flow like that, just around that hopper. And then finally, head on over to this block and put a block of water above that and everything should flow. You'll notice that the particles, the way that the water looks, it looks like it's all flowing over to this hopper, which is exactly what we want. Heading back down to our last spawner, all we have to do is uh, light this on fire and remove all of the extra blocks that we don't want any mobs spawning on. As I remove these last blocks, I wanna remind everybody that uh, the trial spawner will increase the difficulty with the amount of players uh, that it detects. So if you can AFK with a big group of people, there's no reason that this farm couldn't handle all of the mobs. Uh, so the more people that you AFK with, the greater the rewards from this AFK farm will be. Let's go ahead and set this on fire. There we go. And I think this is, uh, this is it. That is every single step completed. Let's go stand in our little AFK area. And uh, and honestly, you, you you don't have to be in the perfect, like exact right spot as uh, you enter in here. Let me act as if I'm entering from other parts of the trial chamber. So we're in survival mode. We'll run over here. The most dangerous part here is uh, right there. Uh, these platforms, sometimes the, uh, the mobs can spawn on them. And if they see you, they will try to run and attack you. 
Uh, so you don't want them to like lock on target. You can create some like safety blocks around those if you would like, but if you kind of know where you're gonna be standing and you'll be standing in this AFK area, you'll be completely safe from all of the mobs. Uh, so it's going ahead and generating all of the skeletons in this one where it was strays before uh, in, the, in the past one, but they're uh, being spawned in, immediately killed, and then eventually once all of uh, the trial spawners go through all their waves, all the items will come up here. Now I have noticed that the trial spawners almost do like, uh, they try to spawn and if they can't, they just give up. Because I noticed uh, that when I did this build with only just like one block that was on fire, it took forever for the trial spawner to uh, pump out enough mobs to actually finish all of the waves. Uh, and that was, I think, because it was just searching for a lot of places to summon in uh, the mobs. So the more space that you have around a trial spawner to uh, bring these mobs in, uh, the faster that it will try to spawn them. I'm seeing potato. What else do I see? Do I see something over there? Okay, the potato went past. Anything else? All right, let's go check it out. What did we get from our very first harvest? Ah, three trial keys and two baked potatoes. There you go. I hope that you found this build useful. It is by far the simplest version of a uh, trial key farm that I have found. And uh, I, I really hope that the netherrack uh, fire thing is not patched. Otherwise, I'm gonna look like a big old doofus in the future. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like this video. That helps a lot. Share it with your friends and uh, use this in your world. That'll make me happy. See you in the next video. Bye.